Hi, welcome to this episode that combines data engineering and data analysis into one. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through how we can provision a table in the Snowflake warehouse to Azure SQL database by leveraging the Azure Data Factory. Then, we're going to use the Power BI desktop to connect to the Azure SQL database, create dimension tables from the flat file, load into the Power BI and create a simple report. So, let's get started. I'm going to come to the app.snowflake.com and I can see under the databases, I can see the Fabric DB database that is within the Fabric WH warehouse. And then we have the Snowflake, Snowflake sample data default databases. Now, within the Fabric DB, I've got this transaction schema name and the sales table name. So we want to provision this sales table in the Azure SQL database, and then we can create a part of the report on top. So I'm going to come to the portal.azure.com, and I want to start off with the SQL database. I'm going to click on the Cornerstone IT Solutions Database and under the left-hand panel, I'm going to see the Query Editor. So I can use the SQL Server Authentication to open the editor. I can even use the Entra ID, previously known as the Azure Active Directory, to launch the editor. I'm going to use this Entra ID and this is the editor. So for now, I'm going to expand the tables and I've got these four tables. Now, I'm going to create a table that's going to hold the data coming from the Snowflake. So I'm going to come to this notepad and copy this create table. And I'm going to paste in this canvas. And we're going to have these columns, the order date, order year, to the sales amount with the appropriate data types. And the name of the table is going to be called sales. Now, when you're getting data from the Snowflake to maybe Fabric Warehouse or Azure SQL and so on and so forth, it is absolutely important you specify all this name of the table in capital letter because the Snowflake uses the capital letter, all caps only. So if for by any chance you probably use lower case, it's not going to work. So it must correspond with the case. So please take note of that. All right. So I can go on and run this create table. So this is sorted, query succeeded, affected rows zero. And then I can query the newly created sales table. And I'm going to see the structure under the result tab. We have the order date to the sales amount columns. Beautiful. Now we want to use the Azure Data Factory to integrate the data from the Snowflake to the Azure SQL database. I'm going to come to the next tab and I'm going to use the Cornerstone IT Solutions ADF1 Data Factory. And I'm going to launch the Data Factory Studio. So this is my Data Factory Cornerstone IT Solutions ADF1. I'm going to expand this tab. We have the home, the auto, monitor, manage, and learning center. Now, I love to create my linked services to the source and the destination. And then I'm going to click on manage. So under the manage, under the connections, we have the linked services, integration runtimes, Microsoft Power BI. So for the linked service, I'm going to create the new link service to the source, that is the Snowflake database. And I'm going to search for Snowflake and click on continue. Now, I'm going to call this one Snowflake Linked Service, and I'm going to specify the account name, the database, the warehouse, and then the authentication type. Now, for the account name, now, when you sign up on the Snowflake, you're going to get a welcome mail that contains your username and the dedicated login URL. So, I'm going to copy all of this, but I don't need everything. Let's Ctrl C to copy and come back to the ADF, and I'm going to Ctrl V, so I'm going to get rid of this path, the HTTP, and I will get rid of the dot snowflake computing.com. So this is the account name. And then for the database name, uh, don't forget the database name is the fabric DB. So I'm going to type in fabric DB and I'm going to copy that and come to V in the warehouse. So my warehouse name is WH and for the authentication type, I'm going to provide the username. Again, I'm going to go to the mail. I'm going to double click on the cornerstone data and I'm going to come here. Ctrl V and I will type in the pass and then test connection to the Snowflake database. This will give us a successful connection, all things being equal, and then we can move to the next stage. Okay, connection successful. Click on create.
So we have the linked service to the source. Now I want to create another linked service to the destination that's the sync, which is the Azure SQL database. So I'm going to search for Azure SQL database and click on continue. And I'm going to call this one Azure SQL database linked service. I'm going to provide the Azure subscription. This is going to be my Visual Studio Enterprise. And of course, for the server name. Now, to get to server name, I'm going to quickly um, come here. Let me use this tab quickly and come to the Cornerstone IT. So at the top in the overview tab, you're going to see your server name. So we have the Cornerstone IT solution dot database dot windows dot net. So I'm going to just pick that from this drop down and that's it here. And then for the name of my database, I'm going to pick the Cornerstone IT Solution Database. And then for the authentication type, it's going to be SQL Authentication. And of course, I need the username. So I'm going to come back here. So I'm going to click on the same link. And it's going to take me to the SQL server part of the Azure SQL Database. And I'm going to see what's called the server admin. So server admin is exactly the same thing as username. So if you don't know, please know it's the same thing. I'm going to copy this and Come back here and get rid of this. Control V, tab, tab, and tab. And I'm going to type in the password and test connection. So let's see. This again should give us a successful connection. Click on continue. That's sorted. So we have the link services to the source and the destination. Wonderful. And I'm going to come to the all top and under the factory resources, I'm going to click on this ellipsis for the pipelines and then we'll create a new pipeline. In the activities, I'm going to search for copy data and drag into the designer canvas and I'm going to collapse this for easy access. And I'm going to call this one, change this name to Snowflake to Azure SQL database. And I can close these properties. And then for the copy data in the designer, I'm going to provide a meaningful name for the general name. I'm going to call this one data integration. You can use whatever you like. It is up to you. And then I'm going to come to the source. Now in the source, I need to create source data set. So click on the name and it's going to be snowflake data set. Click continue. And then I'm going to call this one snowflake sales table. Now, don't forget we're trying to provision this sales table in our Azure SQL. So this is going to give us a more good context to the name of the table. And I'm going to pick the linked survey we created. And then I'm going to set for the name of the table in this drop down. So let me click on this and I'm going to probably wait for all the names to be deployed. So I'm going to set for sales. So I'm going to say the transaction dot sales schema name and the name of the table so this is fine import schema from the connection store click ok so the source data set for the source tab has been sorted now i want to go to the sync destination again i want to create the sync data set it's going to be azure sql database and then i'm going to give this a meaningful name i'm going to call this one azure sql sales table and I'm going to choose the linked service we created and I'm going to browse to the name of the target table. So this is going to be database owner.sales and I'm going to turn this off and click on OK. So this has been sorted. Now I'm going to click on validate and get an error. So I'm going to see this direct copying data from Snowflake is only supported when copying into Azure Blob Storage with delimited text packet or the javascript of the position format for other scenarios please enable staging so this was applicable to me the other scenario by enabling the staging so how do you do that i'm going to close this tab and then i'm going to come to the settings we'll do that in the settings tab move this up a little bit and then i'm going to say enable staging and i'm going to create a separate linked service to the staging that is going to be my blob storage account so we have the staging account link service create a new one and i'm going to go with this name and now i'm going to focus on using azure blob storage. you can use the ADLS chain to the azure data lake but i'm going to use the Azure Blob Storage. Now, it is absolutely important you change the authentication type because the Snowflake only recognizes the SaaS URL, that is the shared access URL, not the account key, not the service principal, no SAME or UME. So, I'm going to use the SaaS shared access URL and I'm going to provide the SaaS URL that is linked to my Azure Blob Storage, not 
the Azure Data Lake Storage and Tool. So I'm going to come here to this tab, go back home, and I've got this blob container storage now. This is just an ordinary blob storage account, not an ADLS Gen 2 because the hierarchical namespace is not enabled. So this is just another blob. Now, before I generate the SaaS, I'm going to come to the containers on the data storage, and I've got this Snowflake container that I'm going to specify in the storage file path later. So under the security plus networking, I'm going to choose the shared access signature and I'm going to allow this SaaS to be used on the service container and the object and it's going to start running from this moment today and terminate today by past 8 in the morning. So I'm going to generate at the bottom the SaaS and connection string and I'm going to scroll down. Now, when you're new to the data engineering in the as your platform, this might look so confusing and you may be wondering which of these strings do I need to pick. Now, we only need to pick the blob service SaaS URL. So I'm going to click on this and copy that. Now, this actually contains also my SaaS. Now, my SaaS is actually around this part of this code. Yeah, can you see? Yeah, from this part. So let's go back to the ADF control V and I'm going to scroll down. So this is not required the SAS token because it's part of this already. It's this the SAS token around here. So click on test connection. And again, this will give us a successful connection. Click on create. And this has been sorted. And I'm going to move this down a little bit. And now I need to specify the storage path of the blob of this and um, the SAS token we just use the SAS URL rather. Click on the browse and I want to point to the Snowflake container within the Blob um, storage account. And I'm going to click on validate and now no error whatsoever. And I'm going to click on debug to perform the job. So I'm going to close this tab and on the output tab, I'm going to see the pipeline properties such as the run ID, the name of the activity, the status, the time, and so on. So I'm going to just wait for some couple of minutes and this should give us all things being equal, a successful data integration from the Snowflake to the Azure SQL database. Okay, succeeded. This is cool. Now let's go and check this out by querying the sales data. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go ahead and query the data and come to the result. There we go. So we can see this worked pretty fine. I can collapse this for now. So we have the order date, the order year to the sales amount column. So we are done with this part of the job. We are done with this from the Snowflake using the Azure Data Factory to the Azure SQL database. Now, I want to actually connect the data set in the Power BI and perform some little analysis. So I'm going to come to the Power BI desktop and I want to start a new report. And I want to get data and I want to get data from the Azure SQL database. So I'm going to search for Azure SQL database. So we have database and then click on connect. And I'm going to provide the name of the server and optionally the name of the table. And then I can provide the data connectivity mode, which is either import or the direct query. So for the server name, I'm going to come back here and go back to this tab. Okay. Yep. Okay. So let me just go back home and then go to the SQL database. And at the top right hand corner, I'm going to see my server name here. So copy that and go to the Power BI and Ctrl V. Now I can forget about the database name. So I'm going to use the import mode because it's just a small data, not quite a lot of file. So click on OK. And I'm going to provide the credentials to sign in. So I can use the current credentials. I can use the Microsoft account. I'm going to use this account because I have the same tenant across both platforms. So I'm going to sign into my account. OK, so I am signed in. So click on Connect. All right, so I can see the Connection IT Solutions database, just the single database, and I'm going to go ahead and connect to the sales table, and I'm going to transform the data in the Power Query in order to create the dimension tables. So transform data, and then we have the data landed in the Power Query. Beautiful. So I'm going to quickly come to the sales, right click and create a duplicate of the table, and I'm going to create the product dimension table. So I'm going to right click on the 
product column, remove other columns, and I want to get rid of the duplicate values. And I'm going to sort these in an ascending order. And then I want to come to the add column tab. I want to add an index column from one. I'm going to call this one product ID. And then press enter. And I'm going to rename this and call this one the product. And then press enter and i'm going to come to the original table right click and create just one more table that's going to be fine duplicate and this is going to be the payment type right click remove other columns right click get rid of the duplicate sort a to z come to the add column tab click on the index column from one and this is going to be the payment type id and then press enter to commit and i'm going to right click and rename and call this one d payment type so press enter and i think this is fine so i'm going to go ahead and load this into the power bi data model and it's going to create for us an automatic relationship in the model view okay so that is sorted we have the three tables the fact table as the sales and then the deep product and the deep payment and then when i come to the model view this is going to automatically create the one-to-many relationship across the three tables and we can come to the fact i can even create a new table and uh, let's just call this one measures or dax measures and then i'm going to load as a disconnected table into the model and then i can use this to house my measures so i'm going to right click and then create the let's just perform total sales so i'm going to call this one total sales and use the sum x function so i'm going to iterate over the sales table and then i'm going to provide the sales column in the sales table close the brackets press enter and then i can apply currency formatting to make it easy to read in the report canvas and let's want to see the total sales percentage i'm going to right click new measure i'm going to call this on total sales percentage equals i'm going to use the calculator i'm going to call the total sales comma and then i'm going to use the all function and call the f the sales table and then close the brackets close the brackets now when i press enter it's going to give me the total sales now i want to go ahead and use the divide function so divide so for the divide for the numerator i'm going to provide the total sales and then comma and then it's going to be the denom so i'm going to close the bracket for the divide press enter to commit apply the currency formatting and i can get rid of this default column one from the model and it's going to automatically change the icon beautiful and uh, i'm going to drag the total sales and let's just you know see this in a table and i'm going to drag the payment type and then i want to see the total sales percentage and i'm going to move this up a little bit okay so we have the total sales and the percentage of sales by payment type which is fine and then i can just create one more thing let's just see uh total sales by payment type and let's visualize this using the cluster and batch so we have the payment type by total sales and i can come here i can turn on the data label so here we go so this is the process on how we can provision snowflake table in the azure sql database and create a power bi report on top of the data i trust you enjoyed this video if you do like share comment and follow me for more data engineering videos because the best is yet to come thank you for watching bye for now